Hi and welcome to another Motion Mile After Effects tutorial. It's Mackenzie Chriswell here, uh, and today we've got another great motion graphics design, uh, motion graphic design uh, to take a look at. To Uh, so, to get started, we're going to need a new composition, uh, so we can come up here to Composition, New Composition, we can hit this button right here, or my favorite, Command N. Uh, and then I'm going to be using a 1080p composition here, uh, 60 frames per second, uh, well actually we'll knock that, that down to 24 here, and I'll actually design at 720p. Uh, the tools that we're using in this design are actually really efficient and render very quickly. Uh, but since it's a little more complicated than your average design, we're just going to want to make sure that we don't have any kind of issue with the screen recording going on. Uh, and I'll give it a name, call it a tutorial. And of course, you don't have to use these settings, uh, but if you're someone who likes to watch the tutorial and punch in the exact numbers uh, that I'm doing, uh, keep in mind that if you don't set your composition up this way, 720p, 24 frames a second, uh, the numbers will vary a little bit depending on your resolution and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, got that all set up, we'll go ahead and hit OK, and here is our new comp. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off with just a new uh, solid in the background layer, new solid, and uh, we'll call this background, and we want to make sure this is black. Uh, and there's a couple of actually uh, After Effects plugins that we're going to be using. Uh, <laughs> ideally, uh, you wouldn't be using plugins at all, but if you want to create something like this inside of After Effects, you know, a, uh, I guess 2.5D is the term that's been coined for After Effects type of workflow, you really do need some presets uh, to help get you there. So we're going to be using uh, an effect called Trap Code Tau. Uh, if you have trap code particularly, you already probably have it. If you don't, you can get a free trial of it, no problem, and take a look at it, see if you like it. It's not too expensive. Uh, it's not too expensive, and I believe you can even buy, like, render license of it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, optical flares. We're going to be doing a little bit with the flares, and uh, everyone <laughs> recognizes that one. Uh, so what we're going to be using uh, Tau, Tau for is to actually create that tunnel kind of design. Uh, so what we need is a new solid uh, to put this effect on, so we'll call it Tau. Uh, and just so that our colors are a little different, I'll uh, come in here and make it kind of a, a mid-gray tone. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab that effect, trap code Tau, and drop it on here. And you'll notice right away it does some really, it, just creates kind of this weird uh, design, uh, and this is exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, this is an app that kind of generates a 3D mesh. If we go ahead and do layer new camera and put a new camera in here, uh, you probably want 50 millimeter or lower. Uh, probably 50 millimeter exactly is your best bet. Uh, but uh, if we come up to grab the camera tool, uh, we can see this is actually 3D mesh uh, that Tau is generating. Uh, so that's a good, good starting point for what we want to do here. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to Tau here and uh, get uh, some stuff going on. Uh, so the way that this works is it creates uh, a 3D path uh, based on a mask. Uh, as you can see right now, it's just using kind of a circle mask, and we can actually stick with that. And so let's let's do some interesting things here to try to get that nice abstract design. Uh, so we'll come in here into the segment tab, and we should be able to find some cool stuff in here. So let's see. We'll actually turn down the chamfer size a little bit. Is why I really wanted to come in here. And uh, while we're in here in the segment option, what we'll also do is we'll turn the segments down to about three uh, and leave the sides there as well. And if we mess with the chamfer size again, you can see we get kind of this interesting triangle design. Uh, and this is actually a pretty good starting point. Uh, the way to actually create kind of that tunnel design uh, is we'll come into the repeat paths option and uh, we'll turn on the first repeater here we'll uncheck this box right here uh, and we'll turn up the amount of repetitions 
and let's see and we want to repeat on the z-axis so we'll bring up the position of that and then if we come here with this camera tool this uh, tracking camera tool and come and zoom in to this design that we've created here we can start to do some more interesting adjustments here so let's adjust this world position a little bit let's actually turn up the amount of repetitions and then turn down this world Z position okay that looks really really nice uh, and if we actually come to the rendering setting and turn something like ambient occlusion on uh, and crank it up a little bit and uh, crank it up a bit let's see we can actually already get a very very interesting uh, design uh, and this would be a great place to start from uh, but what we're gonna do for this situation is actually just make things a little more crazy and so ambient occlusion is actually gonna add a bit to the render time so we'll turn it off for now uh, and what we want to do is come here to this section called fractal displacement uh, and if you've messed with uh, trap code particular you probably have a pretty good guess of what this is uh, and you're absolutely right so what this is going to do uh, here is actually displace our design uh, so as you can see here uh, as we turn up this amplitude setting here uh, it's just displacing the design okay so that's looking nice uh, and then just to give it a little bit more of a crazy feel we'll come back up to segment uh, and we get the option to twist on the z-axis so we'll actually do that and let's see we can we can also adjust kind of the segments here uh, to really really vary the design that we get uh, you can see we're getting some crazy designs just by adjusting a few little settings so originally we did have a very wacky design uh, but I think if we go back far enough we'll hit command Z a bunch of times we can get back to that really nice kind of clean elegant design here we go there it is uh, so originally this was of course not how this project was set up uh, but this is a cool thing about Tau is you can just come in here mess with shapes in any way you want uh, so for this uh, what we'll actually do is use this design right here uh, to work off of uh, so here is kind of uh, the the basic setup and there's just a little bit of key framing uh, that we'll want to do uh, this will actually end up being around 12 seconds long uh, so we'll go ahead and trim that up right there and at about probably the eight or so second mark we're gonna want to flash to white and get our nice title uh, so what we'll do in order to make sure that that can happen is bring down our camera transform settings here and we'll keyframe the point of interest and the position uh, highlight both of those keyframes and drag them back to the beginning of the comp and then what we'll do is come up here and drag this track Z camera tool and we'll move forward quite a bit through space uh, so that's actually about as much as it will let us move let's come back to Tau real quick and you can see kind of with the movement uh, these segments are pretty far apart so let's go back down to the repeat pad section and try to adjust that Z position a little bit more maybe get them a little closer together okay let's try let's uh, turn on that ambient occlusion again uh, here at rendering We're gonna make it really intense just so that we can see it well. Uh, and if we just that, okay, looks good. And uh, and just to make the shot a little bit more dynamic, we'll come back down to the camera 
and we'll keyframe the rotation. I believe we'll want the X rotation. No, is it the Z? Yeah, okay, so Z rotation is what we want. Sorry about that. Uh, and so we'll keyframe the Z rotation here at the end to kind of be this perfectly aligned center triangle. And then as we start more at the beginning, we'll rotate it about that much. And then if we go ahead and take a look at what we're getting, we get a much more dynamic shot. So let's go ahead and try to play it back here. And very nice, very nice. Uh, so let's see, go ahead and save that real quick. Uh, and then come back into Tau and let's fix this ambient occlusion real quick. It's a little crazy. It's more than a little crazy. There's a balance between intensity and radius that can be kind of hard to hit. Uh, to be completely honest, the Tau ambient occlusion is not the best. So it's it's nothing like what you'd get in Cinema 4D or uh, even in Element 3D, uh, but it'll do a job. Uh, so now let's go ahead and set up kind of the look here. So we'll go ahead and come to the Material and Lighting section. And what I want to do first off is just create a brand new light. And I'll make it a point light. And we'll bring it in here. And okay. And if I hit P, on this light, I can bring up the position and we can try to adjust it. Okay, there we go. So here's our light. And we'll have it kind of be coming from the end of the area and then we'll make it very very intense okay so that's a nice look now let's go ahead come back to Tau and start to adjust the color so we'll, we'll go ahead and darken the actual color of these textures quite a bit uh, and then down here under image based light lighting, uh, we'll go ahead and pick an environment. And there's a couple of these that will give us some nice uh, reflection maps. And we're going to definitely want to adjust that. Yeah, let's pick one of these dark. Well, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll pick this one right here. Uh, and then let's actually, at this point, we'll go ahead and create a white solid here. And uh, we'll put it in the background, in between the Tau and this background layer. And then we'll just draw a little circle here. And this is going to serve as kind of the focal point uh, where we had, we look in our earlier comps, a lot of that light coming out, bleeding through. Let's go back to the segment here and we'll create quite a few more segments and quite a few more pieces. Uh, and then we'll turn turn down the chamfer size and we'll twist all of these in our weird kind of way. And let's see. Then we'll come back here to this repeater setting and let's let's adjust this a little bit let's turn down the amount of repetitions a little bit maybe we'll mess with the uh, segment size a little bit and then if we rotate a little bit on the z-axis we'll actually do this interesting kind of twist and bend and that'll get us a little bit more to kind of the original look i thought it was going to look better uh without it but I've been wrong before. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's a little bit back more to where we wanted to go, where we were originally. Uh, and then if we come back to the segments, it's just really hard to find kind of that perfect sweet spot between the segments and the side settings here. But once you find something that looks nice, you really do just want to stick with it. So we'll try five and three finding what we want. So the more we turn this up, the more ridiculous it gets, actually. 
Uh, let's turn the twist down a little bit. Maybe we'll try zero to see what that looks like. Okay. Make this segments four. Okay, so that's a nice that's a nice look, but it's not what we want here. We'll uh, increase the Z size a little bit. And if we increase the uh, Y size here, it will effectively just kind of extrude it. And then we'll put back in a little bit of that twistiness. You bring that size Y down a bit more. Okay, and if we allow the comp to go through, uh, we still have a very interesting movement. And that's a little more what we wanted. Uh, let's come back to the texture here and uh, we'll go ahead and turn back on that uh, texture that we had. Okay, and let's see here. We're gonna wanna rotate the environment and turn down the reflection strength a little bit. And what we'll do with the light here is maybe move it actually outside of the design. So we're lighting the whole thing, but we get this very interesting look uh, to where we're kind of lighting it from the outside. And it's very interesting, I think. Okay. And let's see. It's really, it's really a matter of just pushing buttons until you find what you like uh, when it comes to the textures here. So, uh, so maybe we'll turn back down the textures a little bit, make it a little darker, more creepy. Uh, I'm gonna grab a tint effect here and drop it onto the towel layer just so that we don't have any color escaping uh, and it'll kind of keep that menacing dark tone. Environment. We're gonna keep rotating the environment until we find a nice mix. And let's see, we'll diffuse this a little. Turn, turn up the ambient. And turn turn up. Turn down. And then we'll turn down the shininess until we get kind of some nice specular highlights here. And we can actually adjust those a little more intensely if we need to later. For right now, we'll leave them about there. And then uh, turn down the reflection strength just a little bit more. We just want a little, little touch of a reflection to give it a nice shiny surface. And that that is, that's doing the trick, I think. That'll be a nice uh, material. <laughs> so now we can start to design uh, kind of the portal flare. Uh, like I said, it is, it is the, the the textures are really just hit and miss, uh, so you want to just keep pushing the buttons until you find a look that you like nice. Uh, but now what we can go ahead and work on here is uh, the the kind of flare in the background and this nice succulent, uh, this nice succulent object in the back that uh, keeps drawing us in. Uh, so what we'll do is there's a setting in Tau called fog, and it's down here under visibility and what it's going to allow us to do is well the the way to show you is to just to turn a little bit of it on and if we turn it on uh, I'll kind of we can kind of see what it does here uh, as I turn up the fog what you can see that it's doing is kind of creeping through to the design as if as a fog would and there's a fog end adjustment and a fog start and what you want is you want to have the fog in pretty high so it'll go all the way back and you want to have the fog start pretty low as well so it'll kind of creep through the design and so what that'll do is just kind of fade out uh, and that'll create the depth that we need to go ahead and put the flare on and really just finish this design up and sell it the rest of the way uh, so let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and actually just make this white background the entire uh, background. And the reason that I'll do that rather than just that circle is that if we, you'll see here, okay, for example, there we get a little clip of kind of some absence between the polygons that we have here. And if I go ahead and create a new, uh, 
a new solid here and make it a an adjustment layer and I grab a glow effect what I can do with uh, kind of these little these little holes in the design that we'll get since I've set the white background to be in the solid is I can turn up the glow uh, radius quite a bit here and also use that to kind of sell the fog effect but also as we turn up the radius kind of use these specular highlights as well as these gaps in the design to help blend it all together a little better. Uh, so that should do the trick. And as you can see here, there's a little bit more. And this glow will also kind of add a little more to uh, kind of these specular highlights here and give those a nice look. Uh, and just as we go through the, through the design, uh, the glow is gonna hit a couple of different things and that'll be pretty nice. Uh, so, now, so now let's go ahead and do the new solid that we'll use to put our flares on. Uh, and there's a couple of different really good uh, flare apps out there. Uh, my personal favorite, and I'm sure the favorite for a lot of people, is uh, the uh, Video Copilot Optical Flares. It's a great app. Uh, just apply it onto your layer, and we're gonna go ahead and actually just move our flare straight into the center and we'll take the center position and actually pull it out a little bit so we'll have some more control over kind of the tail of the flare and then set the blending mode to add. And we're putting this below the glow layer actually so that it will also kind of pick up on that flare and then we'll also just kind of brighten it up, give it a little more kick and that will help fit the flare in there where it feels like it needs to go. And now let's go ahead and click options here. And what that'll do is bring up this separate flare design uh, console, I guess. And we can try to find a flare that we like a lot. And so there's a couple here that are really good. But if we come to the light section, there is a sun digital uh, flare that work that works really well for this design so oh okay so we'll actually turn this down quite a bit uh, I did not see that coming uh, it is a very intense kind of flare uh, but if we look over here to the side while this is very we still get some of that detail and we want to preserve that detail uh, kind of these nice flare artifacts so what we'll do is we'll make the flare big so that we get these artifacts uh, and then we'll actually just turn the brightness down a lot. So we still get a lot of these nice flare artifacts and a lot of this movement. Okay. Uh, but we also have, you know, our suppressed flare that fits in nicely. And so we'll maybe turn that down a little more. Uh, and so that'll be a nice look for the flare. Uh, and then what we'll do, uh, just to kind of really have this flare draw you in to what's going on we're gonna allow it to kind of take over the color of of the comp so we'll go ahead and find kind of a nice orange color maybe maybe something like that and set that to be the color of the flare and if we make that really nice and hot that will go ahead and kind of add some nice color to our composition uh, and then if we add uh, another uh, new solid here, uh, and we'll and we'll also make this one a color a uh, adjustment layer, uh, and we'll set we'll go ahead and call this name color. What we can do is grab a curves effect and try to adjust some color here. So let's let's see. I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little. And I'm gonna kind of try to draw out the highlights a little bit, not necessarily flatten them, but just kind of draw them out and make them a bit more pronounced here with the highlight into the curves. And then since we have this nice red here, what I wanna do is try to bring a little bit of that very carefully into the composition because we don't really want to push any kind of color onto our polygons. We want it to stay very muted, but we want the color to appear as if it's coming from 
the flare and kind of casting itself very naturally onto, look, so I think, I think that'll do the trick. That'll be about as much as we want to do. Uh, so now we're ready to go ahead and animate uh, kind of the flashing and the uh, and animate the uh, the flare taking over uh, the scene. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let, if we bring up uh, the if we hit U here on the camera, we can see some of the key frames that we've set. And so what we'll do is we'll come to around the point where this animation stops, and we'll go back uh, maybe a little over half a second or so. We'll go to the flare and we'll keyframe the brightness and the scale and then we'll come towards the end of this comp and have it brighten up and uh, overtake the scene completely. Okay, so very nice. This is Our design is going to get swallowed up pretty quickly and once it does, what we'll go ahead and do is create a new white solid, which will then act as our final background. And if we hit Command Shift D here, we can have it cut on as this overtakes itself. And just to add a little bit more to this design, the, the polygon design here, what we'll do is we'll add a vignette. Okay. Uh, and double click on the ellipse tool up here so that we get this nice mask. We'll change the mode to subtract, feather it out a bit, and change the mode to soft light, and then br bring the opacity down. And that should do some cool stuff. All right, awesome. Okay, so now what we'll do is we just want to do a little bit more work to the flare, actually. Uh, and so we'll solo it for a second. And there's a flicker control here in optical flares. And what we want to do is change the type from smooth to sharp. We'll turn up the speed and turn up the amount quite a bit. And then... kind of see what's happening. Okay, so we get this nice flickering, and if we try to watch it, okay, that'll look nice. Uh, and then what we'll also do is we will keyframe the center position. We pulled that out, uh, if you'll remember, uh, but we'll keyframe it and pull it over to the side so that also as we kind of move through this comp, those artifacts from the flares will be moving around quite a bit. As you can see up here, if you watch closely, we'll be moving around, kind of panning over uh, our, our design and giving us a really, really nice look. Okay, looks great. And so now is the easiest part of the design. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and add in our title. Uh, originally, I think uh, the title was Sci-Fi Room. We'll just put some initials here. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do the... Uh, motion mile letters here uh, and let's I'm using the font Lado uh, and if you have uh, Adobe Creative Cloud uh, that's part of Typekit uh, or I believe you can probably find it online pretty easily yeah, so we'll scale that down maybe do the light variation Okay, so that's an interesting combination of letters, I guess. Uh, so we'll put those there, and we'll spread them out a little bit, add some tracking here. Okay, looks nice. And if you watch in the original, one of the cool things that happens is our title kind of teases itself a few times uh, before we actually get to see it. So. Uh, there's there's a way to make that happen, and so what I'll do is I'll actually uh, pre-compose this title, uh, and that's a good practice so that we can go into this individual pre-comp and edit the title, and it's also going to allow us to make uh, some adjustments to this title uh, as if the title is a layer rather than a text layer, uh, an image, I guess. Uh, an image, I guess, is the easiest way to describe it. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come to T, is uh, we'll hit T, uh, or of course hit this arrow, go down and transform and find opacity. Uh, and what we'll do 
is here at the beginning, we'll have it at zero, and then we'll animate it coming on just for a little split second, all the way up to 100%, and then having it fade out a little slower. And we'll have something kind of similar happen here. Uh, more towards the end. We'll have it only go up about halfway this time. And then fade back out. And then finally, right at the end here, we'll have it come to the full 100%. And so that'll kind of add a nice kind of tease to the design, allow the title to tease itself a little bit. Uh, and just so that we have a little more randomness with the actual title, what we'll do is we'll alt click here on this posi on this uh, opacity, and what we'll do is we'll type in the command here. Uh, we'll type wiggle, woo, we need G's instead of F's, uh, and we'll do maybe five and 20, uh, five comma 20 inside of parentheses. And what that should mean, if we take a look here, what that'll mean, is about five times per second uh, the opacity will change and it can sh move as far as 20 percent away from what we originally set it to so we'll turn up the amount that it can move so we can see it a little better and then we might even allow it to move a little faster so maybe an eight eight and fifty yeah, that'll, that'll be much better. Okay, and then we'll turn this on again and give this a look. It's got some nice flickering text. All right, so, and then uh, the title comes on, kind of teases itself a little bit, goes back away, teases itself again, and then comes on full force as this is taking over uh, the design and looks really nice. Uh, there's a few more, and uh, there's actually a few more render settings in Tau we wanna set up just right before we render to make this look the absolute best. Uh, so we'll come back into Tau. We'll of course turn back on that ambient occlusion, uh, and we wanna turn the super sample to probably four, maybe nine, depending on uh, how much power you think your computer has behind it. And that'll be about it. Uh, those are just a few settings that'll help it out. And something kind of cool that you can do, I didn't do in the original, but I actually just noticed uh, while I was down here, uh, is if we come to the render settings and we set a second pass here uh, to render out a wireframe copy, what we get is kind of a nice wireframe overlay of the design itself, which uh, could be very, very cool. Uh, I'll go ahead and render it out with this and uh, we'll have to see how it looks. Uh, but that's been about it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you want to check out more uh, great motion graphics tutorials, be sure to check out motionmile.com. Uh, but that's it for this one. Uh, see you next time.